Is anything off-road completely bulletproof? Today on Extreme 4x4, we attempt to find out when our Toyota Mini Truck returns for driveline upgrades, followed by a really hot payoff. Whoa, turn on. Plus, some safety tips that'll keep your truck on the straight and narrow. You know, every off-road junkie knows that Murphy's Law goes hand-in-hand hand with four-wheeling. And it doesn't matter how experienced you are. If something can go wrong, it will go wrong. Or another one of Murphy's Laws, every solution breeds new problems. Well, not in our case, because today we pulled our Toyota Mini truck back into the shop to take care of a couple of issues that came up when we had this truck out on the trail. And as soon as we fix the truck, we're going to take it back out on the trail to make sure that we solved all the problems. But instead of just driving it, we're also going to show you some driving tips as well as some recovery techniques and procedures. Now if you remember, this Toyota Mini truck showed up in the shop bone stock with a bad engine. And before long, it was transformed into a hardcore wheeler. It all started with a popular body mod in the rear, a fob and dovetail, shortening the truck's frame and bed. Then once all the IFS suspension was cut off, a solid axle swap was performed and a new drivetrain installed including a Ramjet 350, 700R4 and a stack 3-speed transfer case. Then with 37-inch tires on steel bead locks bolted up to some chrome molly filled Yoda axles, the truck hit the trails. Unfortunately, the trails hit back. Now with everything installed in the truck, we had a pretty serious angle on our front drive shaft. And unfortunately, when we got the front axle in a bind, it broke the yoke right at the transfer case. Now luckily, we were able to fix it on the trail and keep wheeling for the day, but we were a little gun shy, not able to really test this truck with just a temporary fix. And today, we're gonna take care of that. you guys know exactly what we're talking about. You build what seems to be the perfect drivetrain and then you get it in your truck and there's problems. But that's one of the greatest things about being a four-wheeler is finding solutions to the weakest link, even if the weakest link was created by yourself. Now of course we had a lot of options, but we decided to go ahead and relocate this transfer case farther back in the chassis behind a secondary reduction housing. Now a secondary reduction box does exactly what the name implies. It mounts behind the transmission and offers us another gear level of reduction before the power even gets to the transfer case. Now for our Toyota Mini truck, we chose a Northwest Fab black box unit. Its 360 degrees of clockability make mounting the shifter cable no problem at all. Now the 2.72 to 1 gear reduction is accomplished by a heavy duty planetary gear set mounted on a 4340 heat treated main shaft and it's all housed in a super thick walled housing. Now the black box is one of the only aftermarket reduction housings that offered bearing support for that main shaft on both the front and rear output, therefore making this thing super strong. The small size and the fact that the black box unit is perfectly round makes it easy to fit into tight places. When installing a reduction box in front of a transfer case, the only real issue is the severe strain on the input gear in the transfer case. Now the 700R4 has a 27 spline output shaft, which is originally what our stack case had when we ordered it. But to beef it up, stack 4x4 sent us a 32 spline input. Now, if the transfer case moved further back between the frame rails, there's a lot of leverage on the output housing of the transmission. Now, all that leverage will cause it to break. So to support the weight of the transfer case, we're going to add another cross member right behind it. With some poly bushings from Prothane inside inch and three quarter tubing, tabs are welded to the frame of the truck. A piece of tubing bent and notched becomes the cross member. And then a large plate is bolted to the case. Now we know the extra weight of this setup will not be a problem. We had to modify both our front and rear drive shafts now that the transfer case is a lot closer to the rear axle and a lot farther away from the front axle. One called a JE reel and they hooked us up with a set of brand new shafts to replace our old ones. Thank you. 
The rear is a three inch two piece unit with the hanger bearing in the stock location for the Toyota truck. The front is a long travel two inch shaft and now we have a perfect angle even with our suspension at full droop. After the break, our Yoda Mini is treated to quintuple shifters, then taken out for a leisurely drive. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Extreme 4x4. Now with our reduction box mounted between our transmission and transfer case, we can start to work on some shifters for all three units. Now with the transfer case, farther back in between the frame rails, we can go ahead and modify the shifters to fit. But as you guys know, getting those shifters placed inside the cab can be kind of difficult, especially when the new location is right underneath of the passenger seat. So to solve that problem, we had Northwest Fab build us a set of triple stick cable shifters. They're built with a Morse type cable that allows them to be easily manipulated into small areas. Plus they can be built for any transfer case. First, the brackets need to be bolted onto the case. Then the cable ends can be threaded onto the shift rails. Now we prefabbed this center console before the stack case even went in. And now that we have the shifter plate made, we can go ahead and finish mounting the shifters. And for the rear, we had to cut out a lot of the floor to clear the transfer case to keep it tucked up under the truck. And to cover it up, we got Trick Solution. Bam! Money! Dollar dollar bills. Yeah. Now the black box also shifts using a cable. And with the shifter mounted inside the truck, we can go ahead and hook this up. It first goes through a mounting flange that's bolted onto the back of the transmission. And then this lever will bolt onto the side of the black box. One item that did not make it into our last show when we put in the drivetrain was the shifter. We chose this low car 10 inch universal floor mounted shifter with a skull knob that has one single button to unlock the shift gates to make it easy to shift from first to reverse. With it mounted to our newly fabricated console, we now have five, counting five shifters in our truck. Booyakasha! <laughs> Time now for an extreme 4x4 tech tip. One area that can be difficult to deal with when working with tubing is getting nice tight fitting notches, especially in complicated joints like this one where we have three tubes converging on one common point. Now we have a couple of tools to show you that make that a lot easier. One is a contour gauge from Pipe Masters that simply slides down the tube before you notch it and gives you a road map of what needs to be trimmed off that tube in order to make it fit. But if you do a lot of fabrication for just under 300 bucks, you can get a computer program that makes dealing with notches like that as easy as making paper dolls. It's from Bentec, and once you have the joint drawn in the program, the software calculates all the angles and spits out a schematic called a wrapper for each tube. Just cut them out, wrap them around the tube, and you have an exact guideline for notching with either a dedicated notcher, a plasma cutter, or even a simple hand grinder. In the end, you're gonna have a nice, tight-fitting notch. Fits perfect every time. We're back on Extreme 4x4 with our newly improved Toyota Mini Truck. Now, we've built plenty of hardcore trail rigs but this one was a challenge from the start. A steep drive shaft angle up front created a weakness at the yoke. And after some broken parts, a trail fix, and more broken parts, something had to be done. So we moved the transfer case back with the addition of a secondary reduction box. This lessened the angle of the shaft while at the same time turning our three-speed stack into a six-speed stack, giving us more gearing options low ratio for creeping, and a mid-range for hill climbs. But as most of you guys know, the weak link on a truck really never goes away. It just gets moved around a bit. So you can bet our Yoda will be back later for more goodies. 
Now, even though we absolutely love four-wheeling, we didn't come out here today just for the trail ride. We're actually going to talk about hitting the trails and some stuff that we just never talk about. Things like proper winching techniques as well as other recovery tips. Proper driving techniques to get you in and out of the trail easy. Now, some of you hardcore guys, this stuff's second nature. But for a lot of you guys out there hitting the trail for the first or second time, you'll probably find this pretty valuable. First thing we're going to talk about is wheel placement. When the truck travels up the trail, the goal is to put one tire on top of the obstacle, not straddle the rocks. Yeah, come on up. When the tire drives over stuff on the trail, it will raise the height of the undercarriage and keep it from getting hung up and stuck. All right, now right here is a really good example of straddling, because if he actually fell off this rock right here, his dip would be hitting it and he'd get hung up. So it's a perfect example of trying to stay on top of your obstacles. One of the benefits of having an automatic transmission is the ability to two-foot drive. By holding one foot on the brake and loading the engine up to make the torque converter reach its stall speed, the truck will crawl forward when I release the brakes. This helps a lot when trail riding because the truck will not roll backwards off the rocks and stumps. Two strong guys stacking boulders helps too. What we're gonna do here is come around this corner, truck's gonna tip over. Probably ride most of it on the side. Now, with our Yoda, it's just gonna add more character to the truck. But with a lot of dual purpose rigs hitting the trail nowadays, you wanna keep them kinda shiny. So we're gonna go ahead and strap the corner of this truck off of that tree. It'll help hold the body up as Chris drives around the corner and should help keep it on, on all fours. Now, of course, this wouldn't be a very good segment without talking about trail manners. Now, for the most part, wheelers are very respectable of their land because we want to keep wheeling on it. But you always have to keep in mind that whether you're at an OHV park or a private park, you're going to want to stay on the trails and follow all of the signs and rules. And also get involved, guys. Check in with your local clubs and organizations and help out with some trail maintenance. Also, join some national organizations like the United Four Wheel Drive Association or the Blue Ribbon Coalition. They're out there working hard to keep Keep these trails open so we can enjoy them for years to come. And come on guys, if you take it into the trail, remember, take it out, pick up your trash. Stay tuned, more hardcore wheeling ahead as our Toyota trail test continues. Welcome back to Extreme 4x4. We're out of the shop and on the trail. Earlier, we pulled our Toyota back into Extreme to fix a driveline angle issue we had with it last time we hit the trail. Now that it's all fixed, we're out here again to test it, but this time our trail ride has a little bit of a twist. Now, just like we said at the beginning of the show, Murphy's Law can rear its ugly head at any time. And when something goes wrong, you gotta have a plan. So instead of just tooling around on the trails today, we're gonna take a little time to show you some recovery techniques. Now the first thing we're going to talk about is proper winching techniques and how to hook up to something, well, like a tree. Thanks, Jess. Uh -huh. Now the last time we had the Yoda out on the trail, we blew the front yoke off the transfer case and we did a lot of winching. Well, we broke the cardinal rule that day and a lot of you guys called us on it. And so today we're eating some crow and saying sorry that we did it and show you how to do it correctly. What we did was we wrapped the winch cable around the tree and just clipped it on itself. What happens is while you winch the truck, the cable actually gets tighter, therefore choking the nutrients off for the tree's leaves and eventually killing the tree. Now, there's a better solution to that, it's called a tree saver. It's basically a long strap that'll wrap around the trunk of the tree. Now what this does, provides a soft mounting point to winch from as well as it does not get tighter. Now, I know a lot of you guys are thinking, it's one tree, what's the big deal? There's hundreds of them out here. Well, a lot of the people who are trying to keep us off public land use things like dead trees, damage to the trails, and stuff like that as ammunition against us. If each one of us does what we can, follow the rules, the trails will be open for years to come. Okay, cable, let's go. A lot 
lot of the times when you're winching, you don't have a direct line from the stranded vehicle to the winch itself. That's where a snatch block comes in handy. Use that with a tree saver and it'll redirect the winch cable right to the stranded vehicle. Okay, straight ahead, Chris. When it comes to recovery gear, there honestly is nothing more versatile than a high lift jack. It can be used as a jack, a clamp, a winch, and in remote areas, firemen even use it as a makeshift jaws of life, just ramming it into the truck, jacking up and expanding to recover trapped victims. Now it can lift just under 5,000 pounds with only 173 pounds at the end of the handle. Now if you're working in soft ground, it's a great idea to get one of these off-road bases, then I'll keep the jack from sinking into the ground. The only thing you gotta watch is make sure you're jacking underneath a nice flat surface, not a tube, so the jack doesn't kick out. And then it's just as simple as jacking the jack up, get the truck off the ground. Now, winching with a high lift jack is pretty simple. It just takes a little more time. With a chain bolted to the top of the high lift jack, a second chain is attached to a clamp that is bolted to the jacking head. Then the truck is winched forward with the jack. When you need to keep going, attach a piece of short chain from the bottom of the jack to the chain. This will keep the truck from rolling back. Then all we have to do is slide the jack back and start over. So there you have it guys, our Toyota's redeemed itself out on the trail and our new secondary reduction box sure comes in handy. Now hopefully we redeemed ourselves by showing you guys the proper winching techniques. So get out there and build something and when you get it stuck, just tug your junk right out. We're going to leave you now with some sights and sounds of a day four wheeling with the Extreme Crew. Peaceful. Whoa, turn off, turn off. We don't have fire extinguisher either. Uh, power steering? Yeah. It'll burn off. Stand by. Ah. Now, of course, this wouldn't be a very good segment about. <laughs> I'm trying to keep the snot in my nose. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you have like a couple of plates and stuff in your back? Yeah, but I'm not twisting at that part. That doesn't hurt? This, no, this does not hurt right now. This won't go away. Perfect! Love the high lift jack! Chris, you wanna go grab that for me? Yeah. <laughs>